Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Just, uh, impromptu, man. We're gonna do it gorilla style. <laughs> with, a, with a U. G-U. Okay. I would, hope, I would hope so. Because there's a difference. There is a difference. You know, there's gorilla <laughs> style, which I'm not against that. No, that's, it could be, it usually no. involves smashing and breaking things. Yeah, that's the yeah. G-O. <laughs> <laughs> there's a difference in that. Some people have gotten in trouble. I would think so. Over not knowing the difference. <laughs> I think a gorilla is a pretty badass animal. It's strong as hell, man. It'd rip I might not be off. offended if anyone. That guy's like a gorilla. I'm like, that's okay. Yeah. I want to be King as strong Kong as that ain't guy. Got nothing on me. Yeah, they got strong teeth too. <laughs> yeah. So what's up, man? You are right now. Nice to have you, man. Whenever I come and hang out with you, it's like a spiritual retreat. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm supposed to be training yeah. and everything, but it's very spiritual. Oh, it's good to be out here, and it's good to yeah. have you here. It is. I mean, we get good people coming together and. Um, I'm glad to have you back. We got a beautiful night. Sunset yeah, going down over the mountain. It's and, awesome. Uh, it's September. fire's going. Yeah, fire's going. It's the... September and it's like 65. Yeah, very nice weather. The whole I know we I did the uh, this was the rifleman one class, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, rifleman one. What'd you run? And I ran. Well, I brought a Sig 516 mm -hmm. that's been trustworthy as long as I've had it. And then I brought as a backup gun a X95. Okay. From um, IWI. And then I wound up having to run the the uh, X95. Are you glad that you did? Yeah, man. It's, um, I got to know the gun, put a thousand rounds through it, and everything's a good gun. Yeah. You know, Thanks I had some hit. issues with my optic, but that's just because uh, I didn't read your instructions. It's all right. It, uh, very few people do. Yeah, and I just threw an optic on there and didn't zero it or anything. Yeah. Well, we got you all set up. And you're hitting steel at 300 yards. Yeah, so. absolutely, man. Yeah, you're doing very well. It was nice, man. It was a great. It was a great class. No, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I think we had a great class. We have a 24 students. 24 there. guys. Yeah, yeah, very good people. Shout out to all those guys. Hopefully, like one or two of them will watch this video. Probably more than that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a bunch of people that actually knew me because they watched the video with me and you from last time, which was like, that's a couple years old. It, it really flew by. I can't yeah. believe it's been two years. And, and the last time we were out here, we were just getting started. But now yeah. we've... You've done a lot of good things with this place, man. Thank you. It's uh, It's been busy. And we, we've had a lot of, of good students come through here. And we want to give them the best experience that mm -hmm. we can. So yeah. I'm glad you came up and you missed the hurricane. So. Yeah, well, no, by the time I get back, the hurricane will be going through Florida, but, but hopefully it's going to miss Gainesville. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope so. But, you know, unfortunately for all those folks that are in the path of it, man, you know, including people like in the Keys and Miami and stuff like that, hopefully they do what they're supposed to do. Sure. Yeah. You, I know you um, you did stuff during Katrina, right? Yeah, I, I was down as part of Task Force Illinois. Okay. Uh, we got sent down there because the police in New Orleans, they didn't know where a lot of them went. You know, a lot of them quit. Mm -hmm. A lot of them just were taking care of their families and mm -hmm. a lot of them got got killed from you know st stuff yeah. you know guys shooting at them or drowning or something so mm -hmm. uh, we were down there and had to deal with um you know people and you know all that stuff that goes with power outages in a city during a hurricane i hope everybody in houston's okay yeah uh, yeah um you know houston is gonna is just i guess starting the recovery process what would you say to people out there to want to know like, what, what's your opinion on what you should do to prep for a hurricane if it's coming in your direction? What kind of things you think are important to do uh, and have and all that? Yeah, it's a good one. Um, you definitely want to have some water, you know, because water, I mean, a lot of the electricity stops the water plant no water. from getting there to you. Mm -hmm. So you want to have some water. You know, a Berkey would be good, a you know, Berkey water filter or some kind okay. of water filtration. Mm -hmm. You'll know, be able to do that. Or just have a bunch of bottled water mm -hmm. as well, you know, sitting, yeah. you know, pay, you know. Make sure you get that stored up. Yeah, obviously food. It's it's obviously you should have some food storage. I mean, if you're not doing, you know, a few months or yeah, a you year. should be doing that all the time. Like yeah. Lola was telling me that even in Gainesville, everything's crazy because people are just panicking, even though they're not really in the path or anything like that. People are just going out and buying sure. everything. But you should have been doing that before this, right? Sure, I think so. You know, just people People a long time ago used to do food storage. It was mm -hmm. just called living life. Mm -hmm. You know, people during the Great Depression and. Now, putting food away and canning, it's just a very smart idea. You know, other things you want, maybe some medical supplies. Like, think about just everyday medicine, like something, how how much better if you were in pain could just a Tylenol or an Advil mm -hmm. do. It mm -hmm. makes a big a world of difference, you know, just small little medications like that. You know, maybe some al some rubbing alcohol or, you know, bleach, something to keep stuff clean. Mm -hmm. 
as far as protection goes, you know, you want to have your trusty pistol and a good, reliable rifle that you that you function and zeroed and kept lube clean and lubricated. Mm -hmm. You know, a rifle and a few, you know, some magazines charged up all the way, and you know that would be just a good thing because when when hurricanes happen in major metropolitan areas, folks, it's, it's just some crime. You know, I mean, there's mm -hmm. just bad people that'll take advantage of the situation, and, and you got to be Always. able to protect yourself and your family. And I'm not trying to, you know, be fear monger or anything. It's just Look at all the major hurricanes that happen in a city, and, and that's what happened. Yeah. If you're in the past, I mean, anywhere you live, you can be susceptible to any kind of natural disaster or even a man-made disaster at any time. Sure. So these are just things you should probably always have. You don't have to go, like, go buy every gun in the no, store, no. you know, buy no. all the ammo or no. buy all the food or whatever it is. No. You know, have 20 generators, but just, like, slowly prepare sure. when you can and when you have money because at the last minute is the worst time. It's, yeah, if you're if you can find it, yeah. if it's available. Yeah, when everyone else is panic buying, you should just be going through things and going, okay, water, like you said. Mm -hmm. Make sure you even store water, like in the bathtub and in bottles and things sure. like that, because uh, when you can't flush in the house and there's no <laughs> electricity, so it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's gonna be not fun. <laughs> right, it's it's not as civilization's not as civilized as people think. Yeah. Yeah, but all these things I think you can do ahead of time. Right? Sure. Yeah, man. Well, what uh, what's the best value that you or what's the what's the biggest takeaway that you took from from the last couple of days? You think? Um, there's so many things, man. Um, at this point, when we've just come out of it, to like uh, to try to think of it. I mean, I, I think the number one thing is I'm never prepared enough. Right. You know, or I'm never trained. I have, I'm not trained enough. Obviously, for me, doing YouTube and stuff like that, it's completely different from what you do sure so it's uh i guess more flashy or maybe some people think it's glamorous but it's not <laughs> no you know but i know i don't train enough and i think um that's one of the things like i think what i was thinking the most is that i, I probably did this two years ago and i should have probably been doing this like at least twice a year well the important thing is that, is that you're getting in you're getting on a horse yeah. you know you're getting on a horse and you're and you're riding and that's good and and you know so much things you can use and just take take what you learned with the gun to use this time and just mm -hmm. transfer it over to your other yeah, ones and that's yeah. the best part and you know i'm glad that uh i'm glad you're able to come and uh, make it out here man because there's uh it's always good to get together with a, with a good buddy yeah man i i was telling people that the cool thing about you is that i think we've known each other somewhere between four and five years ago sure because we met at uh 2013 uh, I think. 2013 or 2013 or 2014 yeah, yeah, it was one of those. It was, it I was think it could have been 2013, yeah, um, at SHOT Show Media Day. And you're still that same guy. Thanks, man. <laughs> Which is awesome. That's good. It's a good yeah, reality Yeah, it was a good check. guy. That was a good guy. He's still here. Yeah. I mean, it's a reality check, man, because sometimes, you know, you don't see if you're changing or not. So it's good to, yeah. good to yeah. hear. No, I like that about you. I like your passion. I know that it takes a lot out of you, like... One of the reasons why you do this, this is kind of like your woo-saw after <laughs> like, doing the class. Because you know what? The thing, the thing that I liked about you from the day that I met you, man, is that uh, you're, believe it or not, we're very similar. You're, you're a nerd. Like, I'm a nerd. <laughs> it, it, about certain things. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not as, you know, I don't, I, there's, there's definitely differences. But. Rifle, ammo, bags already loaded up. Now, there's nothing she needs other than to bring herself. Yeah, I had air pro, all that stuff. That's true. Son, um, I don't have all that stuff everybody else is putting on. <laughs> I said, Mom, did I tell you to put anything on? She goes, no. I said, so you're going to be just fine. <laughs> and of course, halfway through the class, what do you think everybody did? Take yeah, they started taking everything off. I said, see, Mom, you're not behind the power curve. You just started the, you just started the hike in the smart way, right? So it's all good. So you won't need probably half the stuff you brought. Right? No problem. <laughs> You know, and you're introverted. People don't think I'm introverted, but I am. Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a very introvert. No one's going to believe that. <laughs> but you could ask Lola. I'm very intro. Like, if I'm, if I'm in front of people, I can turn on like that and get all whatever. But uh, when I'm by myself, um, you know, go right inside. Sure. Uh, do a lot of thinking. Yeah, big time. Yeah. So it takes a lot out of you to... I don't think it's the class, the physical stuff. I think no. it's the emotional, like trying to tell people or get across to people how important. And yeah, the, the hardest part is is really you know is uh, you, gotta learn you know teaching people you firearms. Like you're definitely coaching them through the, the techniques and teaching mm -hmm. them how to do that. But 
You almost got to be a kind of a psychologist and try to get this mental shift, yeah. you know, to take place to actually be armed and, and carry a firearm to protect. Yeah, why is this so important? I mean, yeah. you know, you were talking about like one of the things like now that I'm thinking about it in my brain, one of the things I learned is that um, you don't need a bunch of stuff on your rifle. No, man. You don't, you don't at all. And you don't even need a bunch of gear. No. No, you don't need that stuff. No. There's there's a lot of people that tell you, you do, and, and it's like, man, I don't know. We had some shooters in here in this class that were rocking it out with minimal stuff. Yeah. Iron sights. Iron sights. And, you know? You know, I mean, I'm sure if you wanted to, you could have a bunch of gear and have companies, and you're, like, selling people all this sure. gear. But the thing about you is you don't believe in it. No, you know, if you don't believe in it, you'll never try to push people in that direction. No, man, you get you got to do you got to go with proven things that work over time, and that's and mm -hmm. basically, you know, if you want to shoot well, you got to put the hard work in. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that in class. And there's yeah. a lot of people that want to shoot well, but they're unwilling to put the hard work in. Mm -hmm. You know, the processes of nature, seasoning firewood. Mm -hmm. I'm a big big connoisseur of is, is right. chopping and splitting and seasoning wood. Is Hank knows. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, seasoning firewood takes time. Growing a nice garden takes time. Mm -hmm. You've got to let nature take its course, but you still have to put the work in. Yes. Well, with shooting, it's the same way. You've got to put the work in. You got to do the elbow grease. You got to dig in and and do the time and, mm -hmm. and cultivate yourself to be a good shooter. You don't just buy a bunch of crap and then all of a sudden. Right. You know, let me just check this while we're talking. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm listening to you. So, what do you think? Um, like, I know one of the things... Okay, it's still good. Here, let me um, open it up a little. One of the things I think, right, is... And I'm sure you have primers for people that are coming out to the class mm -hmm. of what they should bring, what they should have, and all that. But, like, with me, it was reedy stuff. You know, like, in other words, stuff I had to read and sure. <laughs> go through it, which I did, but I went through it real quick. What are the things, what are the misconceptions that people have about what they should bring and what kind of gear they should have versus what you tell people and what's more practical. Oh. So if some so if someone's watching this, like I was telling you, there, there are quite a few people in the class that they saw the video we did last time. Sure. Um, and so if people are coming out here, they might go, oh, let me go look up a video. Cool. So if they were looking at this and they wanted to know what they should bring, what do you... Oh, for any class, you know, your eye and your pro, like, you got to have those clear and smoke, you know, or, or tended for the sun. Um, you got to have good stuff of that. You definitely got to have those. Those are your two most important senses. Your Yeah. And we used the first day it was raining. So you used clear. Yeah, so sunglasses would have done you no good. Sure. So bring clear and dark. Um, you, know, you definitely want a good pistol or rifle. I mean, good, like, it's actually a good name brand, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's a proven company that works. And, you mm -hmm. know, there's some that work better than others. Should uh, you bring a backup? Absolutely, if you can? yeah. I want to bring, you know, whatever gun you're bringing, you know, bring a spare, because sometimes things don't go your way, and, you know, sometimes you need a backup rifle or backup pistol, you know, to, to use in case your main one goes down. I'd hate yeah. for people to spend all kinds of money on a class and then only bring one gun and then. Then, then get into yeah. something like I did, and then make sure it's all the same ammo. Sure, yeah. Or bring, or bring enough of the other ammo. Sure, yeah. Your ammo, good ammo. You know, don't skimp on the training ammo. You know, don't, don't skimp on that. Run some good stuff. Um, magazines, man. You don't need like a bazillion magazines. You know, just bring, you know, four, five, six mags. Yeah. Not, not too many. Yeah, that's and, true. I found that that because you get plenty of time to reload. Sure, recharge your mags. Yeah, sure. yeah. Definitely, you can you can come with your magazines loaded up, but you get lots of opportunities to. To reload, and one of the things I noticed with magazines at the end, which I won't tell anyone about what we did specifically, because you have to live the adventure of coming to a training class. But we did something at the end, and I was like running around with like five magazines in my pocket, and I was like, "Why the hell did I bring all these?" Bring five. Yeah, I mean, you know, I could have just probably done it with two for the running around I was doing, and it would have been a lot easier on me. Yeah, it's a lot easier on people, man. I mean, you know, people have weigh themselves down with a lot of stuff, but you know, if you look at the traditional soldiers and people in the military, they don't wear a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they were lightweight, they could move, they could maneuver, you know, things like that. And, and in the I'm, past? In the past, yeah. But nowadays, when you look at the soldier, there's a whole bunch of gear. A lot of, a lot of weight. Yeah. And so when folks are looking into it, and it doesn't make them bad people, because I guess we all do it. I have, I have all that gear, and I brought it with me, but I just didn't take it out. I, I don't know why, because I said to myself, I bought this gear, it's at least going in the truck. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it's a good point that, do, that people do wear it, but, you know, there's a time and a place for everything, you know. But, uh, but generally speaking, people don't need a tenth of the stuff that they have, mm -hmm. you know, as you make it work. I mean, if people are shooting rifles and running light and running, making hits, running and maneuvering and, 
and really making some solid hits while they were moving around and, and moving from point A to point yeah. B, going from cover to cover, and they were doing very well. And then the stuff isn't going to make you shoot yeah. any better anyway. A bunch of gear is going to – that's something that is for 100% true. I think you need like a hat. Sure. And you need the glasses sure, and stuff sure. like that. But if you have a bunch of gear on you, for all the things you're going to do, it's going to get in the way and make it more uncomfortable. Yeah, it will. It, you know, that's it's fine. Guys in the military are doing this, but you know what? You're 18, 19, 20 years old for the most part. You know, the guys that have been in a long time, they've got back and knee problems. And, uh, you know, it's, you look at the soldiers and people, Marines in the past, the sailors, and you look at people that were fighting in the past, they just didn't have all that stuff. And they, they mm. were still able to be effective. So... You know, yeah. We want light infantry, you know, light people that can move, maneuver. You know, maneuvering is much more important than having a bunch of stuff. And it's really difficult to do that if you weigh yourself down. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're going over rough terrain, I'd want to have a Jeep rather than, a, <laughs> than a, you know, a big old armored vehicle. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's uh, that's very true. What do you, you know, I'm, I'm sure that when you do this in your mind, you have some kind of expectation of a big thing. Like you're asking me what I took away from it. And I'll, and, and I'll be honest with you, man. Um, days and weeks from now, I'll remember stuff yeah. just because of everything that we did. It's it's a lot, but what is the number one thing that you want people to take away from your classes? Knowing, um, knowing and believing, they're often not the same, but hmm. knowing and believing that that they can protect other people. Knowing and believing that that's their duty. It's their duty to do so. It's not, and not just, it's not just that they can, but it's their duty. And to have that purpose, you know, to have that drive to want to be an armed citizen to protect other people and know where those rights come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our founding document, the Declaration of Independence, says it very clearly where those rights come from. Yeah. You know? And we have to stand up for those things, otherwise we will slowly lose them. It'll be it'll be slow and steady, and then eventually it'll just be a cascade, yeah. you know. But uh, but we got so many good people and so many good Americans out there that believe in freedom and don't believe in this political correctness and don't believe in the Stalinist speech censor censorship and mm -hmm. you know the, we've we've got to start believing in freedom and believing in people, not not trying to limit them or believe mm -hmm. in government as opposed to individual liberty. You know that's and that's a big problem that we see with, with some folks. But overwhelmingly, America, you know, has good freedom. Freedom-minded people, you know, mm -hmm. they want to keep what they earn, and uh, you know that's a good thing. And a society that's based on envy and covetedness is, it's not going to last very long. So we've no. got to get back to that individual spirit, uh, where people come together and respect each other based on each each person's, uh, based on each each person's morals and creed, and also based on what they do, what they actually do, mm -hmm. not what they say they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I, um, I agree with you on that. I think you know. It's such, it's weird, right? I mean, from two years ago till now, the world has changed in some ways. And in other, like, it's a weird thing, right? It's weird to, like, some of the things are good. Some of the things are really bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of warped. How, how do you see that, all the stuff that's going on? <laughs> Woe to those that call evil good and good evil. Mm -hmm. You know, it was all... <laughs> That's not how I look at things. I mean, there's people that that today will convince you that less freedom is better, and mm -hmm. you know more government is good, and you know that uh, you know certain people need help because of the color of their skin. Oh, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's wrong. Yeah. You know, it's uh, a disservice to those people. Yeah, I think it it, it serves to uh, degrade those people. You know, I think that pressure. You know, they have a saying like pressure can burst pipes but it can also make diamonds right sure sure i mean and i think that pressure makes okay if you're if you don't have all the good things or all the things that it takes to really make it in this world it's going to probably destroy you mm -hmm. and make you fall apart and that's probably a good thing sure but but like you said most people are good people and believe in working hard yes, and they do. working for something and accomplishing achieving things supporting their family yeah putting food on the table going to work yeah. They don't have time to get out there and rabble rouse. They've got to go out there and they've got to they've got to put food on the table for their wife and kids or their husband, their kids, their in laws, whoever yeah. is that they're that they're responsible for. And you know, most people are going out there. They want to get paid. Mm -hmm. They want to get paid so that they can spend time with people that they love and care mm -hmm. about. Not to go, uh, not to have some little angst filled protest. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's the deal. And, and when you look at Americans, they've always traditionally worked pretty hard. You know, they've worked hard and, and earned it. Uh, you can talk about when your dad first came to this country, 
mm-hmm. a, a brilliant man in the country yeah. that he highly came educated, from. highly educated with skills, professional, yeah. professional was high up in the echelon, and then he comes to the United States and he starts by doing a job. He that starts at people, zero. Yeah. He, he starts doing a job that most people would would sneer at. Yeah, and for a him, lot of Americans, a lot of Americans would never do it. You but know, he my, did. Yeah, my dad swept and mopped floors, man. You know, he went from being a college professor and having, you know, um, the world at his fingertips. But he did it all for this, for right now, what I'm doing. So that I could be free. Yeah, so that I could be free. And that's it, man. And it doesn't, and just because the society is so used to instant gratification, it doesn't always happen. It's kind of like with, with shooting. You know, people want to buy competency. Mm-hmm. Like with, with equipment, you know, they want to buy it. It's like, you know, any other hobby that they, people come into, they yeah. try to buy it. But that's not what it does. It's hard work and perseverance and, and being able uh, to apply yourself over a period of time. And in many ways, you know, you've got to, you've got to embrace the hard work that it takes to get what, what you know, like when, I, when I started the ridge, you know, I started the ridge out here, none of these buildings were here. The range wasn't there. It was just mm-hmm. a t- old tobacco farm. Mm-hmm. Nobody, I, I could wish on one hand, and you actually to put a shovel it. up yeah. in the other and see which yeah. one's going to get more work done. you got to get out there and work for it. Obviously, things in life are more complicated than this, but if you wanted to, you could take things and put them in one bucket or the other. Yeah. One is accidental, sure. and the other is the deliberate. Sure. So if you accidentally achieve stuff, more than likely, you, you can lose that or it can be taken away from you very easily. Mm-hmm. So like you can win the lottery, and that's an accident. It's an act of chaos or whatever. You go out there, you play the lottery, everyone else does, boom, you, you know, some crazy chaos of the universe, you win. Sure. Most people, not everyone, but most people just, that money's gone in a few years. Right. Right? But then there's guys who make millions of dollars that they worked hard, they figured out something, they made this money, and they can still lose it. Right. But there's something that they know, they can make it again. Sure. You know, and so that's just like you're saying with anything, like the fundamentals of uh, marksmanship yep. or shooting, rifles, guns. If you really understand them, if you really take the time to get into it and put in the work, someone could take that gun away from you, but you can get another gun. Sure. And you can still, it's not the end of the world. Mm. So when you do, so it's the same thing with this place or anything you do in your life. Someone, you can have something and someone could think they took it away from you, but they really can't. No. Because you made it and you, under, you understand what you did. And you could do it again as long as you're breathing. As long as you can work with your hands, you can always make, you can always earn a living. Yeah. And that's why I respect people that know how to do that. Mechanics, doctors, mm-hmm. you know, people that, um, people that have those, those skills and know how to do it. Mm-hmm. it it's so much, so much uh, respect for those people. <clears throat> I think, um. I think a big difference between old times in America and in this time is that in old times you'd see a successful individual and you'd say, I want to be like that guy mm-hmm. or, or girl. Absolutely. And nowadays it's, I want. That guy has too much. He has too much or he yeah. didn't earn it. Yeah, he should share some of that with me. He, he didn't earn it. You know, <laughs> he didn't earn it, you know. Or, you know, my favorite one is, man, Reed, you know, you got the luckiest job in the world. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, okay, that may be true. But you know what luck, luck looks like, looked like for me for the last 18 years? Getting up at three in the morning for a formation for a six, seven mile run, doing it for four years, right? Mm-hmm. Carrying heavy packs, having to listen to people bark orders, you know, that didn't have anyone's best interest and heart other yeah. than their own. It wasn't luck, man. It was no. deliberate. You're a deliberate person. You Look, we're all, we're all a little bit accidental, you know, or and 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 all of us are, have some kind of deliberation. So you can't be a hundred percent. No. You know, but the more deliberate you are in life, the, you'll find that you'll you'll achieve the things that you want to if they're good, righteous things that you're going after. Do the right thing at the right time for the right reason, and mm-hmm. things tend to work out in your favor more times than not. You know, we're free to succeed, but we're also free to fail. Absolutely. And, and you know, it's uh, we got to accept And that might that. be the best lesson. <laughs> <laughs> we don't always get a trophy when we play the game. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't always uh, have things work out, and but you know what? Um, Dave Thomas, the founder of Wendy's, mm-hmm. you know, he had four or five restaurants fail before mm-hmm. he was successful. I mean, think about it, his life savings four or five times gone mm-hmm. yeah. before it happened. So lots of, lots of successful, successful people out there that you see that you think they just got that overnight. If you really look at their story, it could be just like your story. They failed anybody, at a lot of yeah. things and they just, as long as you're alive, you could do stuff, you know, right. you could, you could keep going. 
No, I, and that's really a big message. I mean, our message here is we have a. It's yeah. like it's like there's ganja or something like that. No, I don't it's know the if fire. There's yeah, no I, don't ganja. People, I don't know if people could see it. No, yeah, we're not we're not smoking anything. But there's a lot of smoke. <laughs> no, there is. It's from the fire. JJ yeah. just put on a couple logs, but yeah. uh, it's no, it's good. cool. Um, when we think, um, you know, what we believe in here, you know, biggest belief is number one that we do have a, a divinely inspired country. Mm -hmm. You know, United we States. Do. Uh, Greatest place on the face of the planet. You know, there's so many good things here, but there's a lot if of people. If you know a better country, you should definitely go live there. But you know what, though? <laughs> there's so many people that, that would try to make it like other countries. And it used to be all, a lot of countries wanted to be like America, but but now other people want to make it like other countries. And it's like, wait a minute here. You know, we, we have so many good things. But, you know, it is a divinely inspired country. It is a divinely inspired uh, things that have happened to us. But, you know, at the same time, um, unless we maintain uh, unless we maintain our, our founding values of Yeah, the morals, core of what made it that. Yes, like, there's a, America individual. didn't succeed. America is not accidental. Hell so go no. back to what I was talking about. America is a very deliberate thing. The founding fathers and, and the whole structure of America, the Constitution, all those things are very deliberate things. And if we lose that... Will wind up like a lot, so many countries in the world are just accidentally cool right now, mm -hmm. and then a couple of years from now they're accidentally really bad. <laughs> right, it's a it's a heck yeah. of a roller coaster. Yeah, but, some of them. Yeah, America's gone up and down. Some some bad things have happened. You know, it's gone through its trials and tribulations. It's still the best place in the world, man. That's that's for me. I mean, honestly, I think if someone knows a better place, mm -hmm. I think they should just go live there. Well, you've lived on four continents. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've been around the world a little bit, you know, and I don't know any other place that's better than America. And I've lived in Europe, in Africa, in South America, you know, and here, and uh, there isn't anything better. I don't, yeah, I don't think. If there was, I would be there, man. <laughs> it, but it there would be isn't. Nice. But you know, and, and here's the other thing. You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, are, are kind of hesitant. I think to stand in the gap of the wall, they're they're kind of hesitant to stand there, you know, and and defend uh, freedom and defend freedom of speech and defend uh, the Second Amendment, and mm -hmm. defend the right uh, against illegal search and seizure by agents of government. You mm -hmm. know, they're, they're, they're not ready to stand in the gap and defend that. And, and that's a problem because uh, I, th I think everyone, I think our attitude in America should be we, we should all stand in the gap and defend that. Yeah. You know? Um, and we should let people talk and tell us who they are, even if we don't like them. Yeah. How can you identify people if, they, if you don't let them talk? I, everybody has a right to free speech, but what they don't have is a right to be heard. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so just because people are upset, well, you're not. Nobody's paying attention. Well, no one wants to pay attention to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't have the right to force us to pay attention to you. Exactly, either. exactly. Yeah. And and you know, you go up and, and you want to prevent people from from having free speech. Okay, well, uh, expect some some back. One day that, that will happen to you. Right, it, the, the, they'll, they'll flip it back. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. If yeah. you might not like this group and you're like, you know what, I don't care if they take away their right to assemble or protest yeah. or free speech or whatever. I don't care because I don't like those guys. Okay, I get that. But what? But the people that are convincing you to do that, one day there's something that you're doing that they're going to go, yeah, that's bad too. <laughs> and you can't do that anymore either. Sure. And we're going to take, you know, that that's horrible. That's a horrible thing or whatever. And we're going to take it away. And then you won't have anything because in that moment when it was the other guy that you don't like, you didn't stand up for that. That happened in guns, right? The, all the laws, or most of the laws they created around guns were to keep the freed slaves oh, absolutely. from getting their hands on guns. Absolutely. And people went along with it because they're like, uh, you know, I don't want those free slaves armed anyway. Sure. But now that affects everyone in America. Well, it set a, it set a judicial precedent to make that acceptable. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was like nobody ever thought it would get flipped back on them. Oh, yeah. You know, it all it, does, man. <laughs> it, always, it always does, you know. And, and, that, and that's a big problem, um, you know, when we're dealing with that, especially a right that's, that's such recognized as the Second Amendment, you know, mm -hmm. as a, mm -hmm. a self-evident right. Yeah, um, and that's and that's a big problem because American American culture involves the use of firearms. American's culture involves the the carrying of firearms to protect oneself. That's one of the things that makes America different. I was telling you, people, why is it in all these countries where people can't have these things and the people agree to that and they don't get mad about it, that that people in those countries come to America as gun tourists, 
They come to America so they can shoot guns and do this thing and do right. that thing. But in their country, they don't have the right to that. Right, but it's a thrill for them when they come here. Yeah, because it's because you know why that happens, man? That's connected to who you are when you're born, mm -hmm. right? That's connected to who you are as a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason why people come here and, and they do this gun tourism is because in their, in their soul, in their soul, they know it's something that they should have. Mm -hmm. They know that, mm -hmm. but they, but you know, instead of instead of fighting for it where they are, they come here and spend a lot of money to just pull some triggers and stuff like that, and then they go home. And a lot of us that are here that have it, we do the same thing. Yeah. Maybe we don't spend as much money, but we have the guns, and we're like, bang, bang, bang. That's awesome. <laughs> right. Well, human beings have sought to arm themselves from uh, the beginning of time. You know, they, they have sought to use weapons and tools mm -hmm. to better protect themselves against people that were physically or beasts that were physically stronger mm -hmm. than they are. Mm -hmm. To give them a chance to survive. Well, we're no different. Yeah. And, like, I think you were talking about this in the class, but um, when people want to take over something and force other people to do stuff, you were talking about what they would take away first, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, and obviously they would want to take away guns, and um, and then there's certain people that they wouldn't want around. Sure, yeah, always. You know, and this is the thing, man. This the reason is is because you can't fight back. So even for me as an artist, I know there's a bunch of different people they always go after in the beginning, including the artists. Oh yeah. Including the creative people because they know the people who are creative can find a way to hide messages like we were talking about good books and mm -hmm. stuff like that mm -hmm. people should read mm -hmm. and creative people can find ways to hide messages of rebellion sure right yeah anybody that think that anybody that doesn't have the group think mm -hmm. is a threat right anybody that doesn't have that group think is a threat so yeah that's what they would do is they would yeah. take anybody that was that was uh that was able to to analyze or think critically about what's going on they don't just they don't just blindly accept what's going on. Yeah. Those are the biggest threats yeah. to them. That's why I do the gun thing, man. That's why I do the gun thing. I, I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I am by my nature, a storyteller, yep. an artist. I create things. and But I, I believe in guns because that's my way to defend always being able to be creative and, being, and be free. Sure. You, you, it gives you the greatest chance to survive versus yeah. anything else. Yeah, absolutely, man. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. I think so. Is there anything else you want to add? I know folks are probably staring at us in the darkness. We've well, got the fire. You've got the yeah. little, you know, firelight going. Yeah, so I'm going to get side some, chat. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going <laughs> to get some B-roll of the fire, but I'm sure people, you know, they can still hear us. Yeah. You didn't know, this is this is probably as close as you can get to on camera of being around the fire. It's actually a cool thing, man. Yeah, I enjoy it. It's, it's pretty yeah. relaxing. That's also ingrained in our souls. <laughs> fire. Oh, it's, yeah. it's primal. You know, this is the, there's been human beings sitting around fire for millennia. Yeah. You know, this is who we are. Yeah. This is the glowing light. Yeah, the that fire we need to be under the at. stars. <laughs> yeah. This is the glowing light that we need to be staring at, not yeah. the not the TV. You know, no. Not the like TV that. or even the computer screen. Like listen, I miss Lola and my sons. And by the way, one of my sons is named Angst. Cool. Yeah, Angst Strange. I know you just mentioned Angst. Yeah. Yeah. The other one's Falcon Strange. There you go. But you know, I miss them and I can't communicate with them, you know, the way I would usually do it. But at the same time, there's a there's a really cool thing about sitting around the fire, yeah. just dudes. Just, just I mean, just people, man. Yeah, talking this, about life. This has been from the beginning of, of, of you know, I mean, people have always sought to be around fire. It's a very mm -hmm. sacred thing. Mm -hmm. We should all do it. I need to make a fire pit. You got the hacienda, man. Yeah, I haven't done it. I, I need to get that project underway at the hacienda. The quick fix. Yeah. You know, now my fire pit, you know, is probably not going to be as cool as the Valor Ridge with the, you know, it, it, it doesn't need custom to be, cutouts and everything, but, you know. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be either. No, I like it, man. It's awesome. It's all good. You know, I like seeing the shit. No matter where you sit, you can see the shadow. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to roll some video in. That's cool. When we're done. All right. Anything else? I don't, I, I'm just glad no, you're man. here, man. I'm glad yeah. to see you. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to chill out. Yeah. Thanks for having me, no, man. I'm glad it's to cool. have you. I will be coming back. Good. I and I highly recommend anyone that you guys have so much different training things going on now. Yeah. yeah. I recommend guys come down. And honestly, I don't know if you guys know this. I didn't know it until I came out. 
I found out that sometimes you can have like a whole week that you can come down and do training for a whole week, right? Yeah, for for six days, yeah. Yeah, so so if you've got vacation time and you can come with your wife or whatever. Yeah, a do, lot of couples. Yeah, yeah, absolutely plan it, man. Like go go look at avalaridge.com. Look at the schedule. Plan out a whole week. I'm gonna do that with Lola sometime. Maybe See, next year. Yeah, you, you know you guys are always welcome here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. I'm gonna come and like camp out. You should and get yeah. the go and go. You get the tent, whatever you want to yeah. do, and get, go camp out. I'm gonna do that. And ball. then I'll even come with the boys. Heck yeah. The boys, you know, they they need to go get their education. I'm, you know, it's like I know about college. <laughs> it's crazy or whatever, but I want them to go off get get a little taste of that you know yeah of what that is but definitely i'll be bringing them out here i'd love to have them all right brother thank you thanks man peace and a shout out to everyone else that was here like uh jj <laughs> yeah jj's in the background and then forrest awesome yeah, forrest awesome guys that work with you man yeah oh, thank you they, they they did a great job yeah and everyone from the class i know i can't remember names too much there are 24 names yeah there's 24 <laughs> so shout out to all of you in the class all good people Okay, it is like nine o'clock in the morning. I'm headed out. Reed is still working. Another <laughs> class. I know we got Patriot another Patriot nurse. Oh man, here she comes. Look at this. Some beauty is finally here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so I'm out of here. I had a great time, man. Hey, got it. Thank you. you. All right. Don't forget to like, subscribe to his channel <laughs> on YouTube. He's also on Full 30. Same thing with Patriot nurse. Don't forget to subscribe. What else? What are we supposed to tell people? I know I'm on Patreon, so I'm Patreon slash Hank Strange. What you need to do is go to Valor Ridge and get some training, you know, from this guy. Oh, thank you. You'll, that's, you'll never go wrong that way. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. And I'll see I'm going to say, yeah, me too, man. I'm going to definitely come back, bring Lola, that's spend some time, camp out here. <laughs> we should. That'd be a good one. Absolutely. I'm going to say goodbye to the class, and I'm out. All right. Peace. We got JJ right there. Oh, look, there's JJ. We're, we're. I don't know. I can't even see. There, where's? Strange the ambusher. Well, I'm just gonna flip it on him. There he goes. Look at that handsome hunk of man right there. I think you hit your head on the bunk this morning. <laughs> your eyesight needs checked for sure, Hank. <laughs> All right, you ready? No. <laughs> you know I love having my picture taken. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather just punch me in the mouth. <laughs>